contributing significantly to the economy of this country is agriculture and it's where we have food now busy food staff they come into the capital of Accra into a market like this the entrance of the Agbogloshi market we want to get there engage the traders who are also wholesalers they cut these food staff from the various farming communities and then they retail them to patrons who come to the Agbogloshi market products from I was picking the product Abbas Caesar has been in the onion business since his teens and he narrates how imports from Niger and the Sahelian countries have become the backbone of the onion trade in Ghana. Before I will buy it, I will go to Ajin Kutuku. When I buy it from there, then I will go and hide some Kia. And when I had a Kia, then I will pay the driver. But it's not a, it's, it's not a small money. That like this money you are here, you see a lot of money I was paying the driver. It's not easy. This small goods, you can pay like 700, 7 million or 1,000 Ghana before they will bring the goods. And the people they will carry it, put down to you, pay them. So it's all, a lot of money. It affected me a lot, seriously, because now the boys I was working with, I have to pay them. If the uh, people, they cannot buy the goods, I cannot pay them. So I, I, I was finding things difficult, seriously. It has to be said, by 2020, Ghana was estimated to be importing over 8.6 metric tons of the commodity for consumption. With the city poorly performing against the dollar, Abbas is worried onions have become expensive for the ordinary Ghanaian. First, if I bring goods, assuming like 50 bags, by one week time or so two weeks time, all will finish. By now, this one will be there almost three weeks, almost one month, they cannot buy it. Then the thing too was here was falling. On the same Agbogoshi lane, tomatoes is another food staff highly imported into Ghana. Altogether, the country imports a hundred million dollars of these vegetables, mainly from Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, among others. In January, we had imports from Burkina Faso. From March, we had from Doma. But we are now selling tomatoes from Anloga. This year, we are worried about the Burkina imports because of the city depreciation. And our transport assembly. And on the market, it reflects not only in the pricing, but its availability and how affordable they are. For Equia Kesewa, this is the first time in her 30 years of retailing tomatoes that the vegetable has become expensive to the point of affecting their livelihood. She, alongside her friends, are disappointed. Despite all the assurances of a bumper harvest, they still have to depend on imports to survive. The current situation is affecting prices. You have to pay drivers who have increased fares, so you have to pass it on to customers. News filtered through of the Ghana Union of Traders Association announcing an impending close down of shops in Accra. Hurriedly, we went to its president, Dr. Joseph Obain, to ascertain if closing shops was the only option left for these importers. The economists say that there's excessive importation that we do. It's true. But the excessive importation that we do have a way out also. Because um, we can use our investment laws to curtail this excessive importation. But the import that we do, the local share is just about 15%. The rest is by um, this foreign um, 
foreign investors who have been allowed to come into the retail space and who are actually dumping these goods on us. So they bring the goods and come and take the forest. So if, the, if the, this is the case, how are you going to be able to sustain um, your gains? In the market, there are importers who play double roles of being wholesalers who also supply goods to retailers and these retailers also in turn sourcing to other sub-retailers. Now what has happened is, the unpredictable increase in the CD rate against the dollar has created uncertainties in the market leading to traders forecasting their prices on the future value increase of the dollar on each trading day. So genuinely, you can see that, well, we have people who are adhering to the directive from the Ghana Union of Traders Association to close their stores. And it is because they want to adhere to the directive. So I want to speak to them of them and why they are doing that. Alaji, it looks like um, genuinely, you know, because we are a you member know, of Waso, and now two stores. Why didn't you? Patrick <laughs> I befi or Cassaye. Bacasa or Cassaye and Bibia, if you want Babata. Open him, mini hope. I hata 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 to make sure they press home their demands for something to be done about the extent at which the Ghana city is depreciating against the major international trading currencies, especially the US dollar. So uh, the whole of this lane has seen stalls having their doors shut. And these are for genuine reasons. Because the, in, uh, the increase is getting higher and higher astronomically, the frustration is turning into anger, as I must say. Because somebody came uh, come for pro forma invoice maybe a few weeks ago, and it, it was 10,000 Ghana cities. A few weeks on, when they come again to come and buy the goods, the, the, it has actually changed from 10,000 to 20,000 Ghana cities. What is he going to do? Because he took his time to go and save to come and buy, and now it has doubled. So the person becomes so confused, and then frustration gives way for anger, and then um, curses follow, and all that. This, this is the situation that we are reaching, and it's not even good. For the security of state. And your ma, me find it say last three months to this month. And your ma ko ane ko se biya ma ko fa adi ane ten CD. Adi ba chime ko no mu si fifteen CDs. Me sume ba me ba tu obi so obi fifteen CDs. Me sume ede enye. This year, the new man who came and cost twenty eight pen. Over the last three months, prices have been changing daily. In a week, me ko ane forty CDs. And that's so when they make call fifty cities into me and talk into me call me kitten you may be an abetting and I may share and call for a matter to a mustum. Now, what I call about honey, Shabbana over. What she can't say, what can't you order? Then you are not profited, you are more your modern check. And I can call to a shop where I had me or buy a lady, price now by a boy. Call honor, you are salty back. But I call ya as I can or profit here when you call to a back. I can every blessed day a price I can buy a shame or shame. We are only working for nothing, just losing our profits to price increases. My yak boko me for city. Kakana sees the seven city. They are no pet. Obano Nukani. A one of the one not to a lewa. What that was a eta. Now, beyond that, once you see domestic inflation also heading up the way it was, then with domestic investors, 
Ghanaians themselves realized that the CD was no longer performing an important function as a store of value. And therefore, for instance, if you had invested in CDs, the rate at which the, the, the CD was depreciating and also inflation going up, you were losing. And therefore, there were those who were speculating and therefore moving their money from CD denominated to dollar denomina denominated instrument. Then we, we, we lost control. Over the last year, economists had been warning of the structural weaknesses of the Ghanaian economy, especially its high dependency on imports the appetite for borrowing and expenditure patterns which exceed revenue. That is where you see Guta and the rest of them because here their transfer obligations are denominated in CDs. Their cash flow generation capacity is denominated in CDs whilst their transfer obligations are denominated in dollars. So if you start the year with a certain level of capital, you could only buy uh, uh, a certain volume of let's say import now anytime the city depreciates one it was attacking their profit it gets to a point and it will wipe up the wiped out the profit then it begin to attack your capital so it gets to a point realize that your capital base is actually shrinking through no fault of yours when it happens that way they are helpless right and then there's a limit to the pass through also right so you see it cutting across then inflation started broadening across food and non-food inflation across households when it gets to that point it's like everybody was trying to do whatever that they could to to to, to protect their value while government keeps announcing its planting for food and jobs policy has created sufficient jobs and food production prices of locally produced staples keep increasing james town in my description should be the hub of the production of kenke. Kenke, as we all know, as a long-standing tradition, is a main staple of food of the people of the Ghan community, but has now become a main food and its ingredients as well of residents of Accra because of the cosmopolitan nature of the capital. The economy has had some impact on the raw materials used in kenke production. That's why we're here at Jamestown to find out from the producers. Kinka producers at Jamestown also keep feeling the pinch of the economic downturn. So I've gotten my two balls of kinky. From the last time I came here, the kinky balls have reduced in size, certainly because of the economy. But let me just go enjoy it and see how it goes. Come join me. Maize costs inching up. Kinke producers have now opted to reduce ball sizes just to stay in business. For the last four months, prices have been increasing and more rapidly over the last one month. So government need to do something about our plight. The difficulties being experienced by the ordinary Ghanaian has transcended people of all classes of the society. And it depends on who you speak to, you find that the ordinary Ghanaian seem to think a lot could have been done than currently they are experiencing. We decided to have some perspective, especially for ordinary patrons of public transport. It is because they all come from various strata of the society. Correspondingly, because the price of fuel has been surging, transport fares have been increasing too. We decided to spend some time in a trotro, 
the commercial transport going from 37 to Tema. And in here, commuters variedly had their own stories to tell. If there's one thing you would want to be done, you want to tell, let's say, the government to do about the current trends we have, what would that be? Based on how prices of goods and services have not been stable over the last couple of months, if not since January? Um, honestly, the government is trying their best in terms of infrastructure, roads and those things. But then our economy is not that stable, so it's, it's like it's a burden on the economy, making things really difficult. So if they could also look at the other aspects, the other aspects of the economy to help, like they, planting, they said we are planting for food and job, but yes, so we are in the West Africa, we have the most expensive food stuff, so they should. I don't know what they are going to do. You go to the market, food is expensive, is it not? It's very expensive, very, very expensive. So yeah. they should just try and do something about it. You tell me your experiences so far in terms of your observation because of the work you do, uh, how you have to fend for your home, etc. Okay, I do the same job as you do. And I had to rush to Accra, come do some stuff. And because of um, fuel prices, I'm just being personal because of fuel prices, I had to pack my car somewhere, jump into a truck. For real? That's exactly what I did. That's what I'm saying. I'm uncomfortable. You understand? So, it's, it's so bad. Some 20 minutes from the Accra Mall bus stop where we alighted is Reginald Alotepapo. We've come to a point where we want to speak to a, a young entrepreneur. He, alongside his partners, have decided to create a business that offers employment to young people and subsequently they are dependent. But how is Reginald of Regis Juice Bar managing in these hard times? And quickly we'll have to go through the factory floor. Along with his partner, they run a small to medium fruit juice making enterprise, Regis Juice Bar. In this story time for the economy, they seem to be clinging on for survival. I think I personally have sleepless nights because I don't think any of us envisioned being in such a situation a year or two ago. But COVID and the wars have gotten us to this point. I would, I would really appeal to the government to do whatever they can. Because if small or medium scale industries have to be letting go of staff and have to continuously downsize, then we are not going to grow. Revenue is going to be very difficult for them to come by. And I think there's going to be a lot of uproar and frustration in this country. So I think the government has to do more. Um, probably if they have to waive some, uh, some taxes, if they have to inject more, if they have to find incentives to get people into entrepreneurship, to employ more, then it will help. Because currently, I have so many um, applications sitting on my desk. And although I wish I could help all these people, I cannot. There's only so much I can do. So if others can also be encouraged to come up, then it will help us all. From what still looks a promising venture, Regis Juice Bar, like many of its kind, needs funding and extra buffers just to stay afloat. Incentives, I believe the government can put some incentives in place to help us. And I believe probably, I know things are difficult for, for, for the governments in um, getting revenue, but they should find ways. That's why we've put them there in charge. They should find ways of making things easier for us because we are in dire times. So you can find us on Instagram, at Regis Juice Bar. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter, Regis Juice Bar. While at Regis Juice Bar, importers were still furious. Our share in the banking sector is virtually nil. Now we have just a few local banks here. The, the, the bulk of them are all foreign. And then look at the chunk of resources, the profits that turns up in this area. And all this also fund itself outside the shores of Ghana and then go up. You look at oil and the extractive industry, the gold industry, you look at the bauxite and all that, and then you come to the almighty telecommunication industries. We don't have a stake there. And they take the bulk of our resources and then send them away. We, we, we just can't sit here right now and say that all that we are doing now is to wait for an IMF program. From now to when the program is probably agreed, what are we doing? What should we be doing? From the fiscal side, okay, we know monetary side will respond, has responded, 
and and we can't blame Bank of Ghana largely for all that is going on. Okay, but to the extent that monetary policy plays a key role in the economy, of course they are also in in the frame of things. But um, uh, uh, that's quite serious. What you see is that inflation, the higher inflation now, is actually undermining the credibility that is built around Bank of Ghana's price stability objective. Okay, you see that, and that is why government own uh, revised macroeconomic target in the 2022 probably are no longer relevant in the market right so we we would need that policy measures both from fiscal and monetary that would anchor expectations towards a certain direction that is important the turmoil is yet to be surmounted but even before then the predictions are Ghanaians have a long way to go before getting out of the woods and back to their normal comfort zone certainly it has to take some pragmatic policy interventions to get the economy back on track and win the confidence of the international business community.